Hello, I'm Justin Cobb. I'm Professor of Orthopaedic Surgery at Imperial College. and I work at Charing Cross Hospital and King Edward VII Hospital for Officers. How many hip resurfacings have you done to date? I've done over 500 hip resurfacings since, and started in about 2000. And when and who did you train with? So I went up to see Derek Mermin up in Birmingham um, and spent a very happy day with him learning how to do the procedure. Uh, in 1999, I think. And what hip devices do you use? Currently, I use the BHR for male resurfacing, and I use the Furlong Evolution Ceramic on Ceramic Hip as a, my standard primary. And I've also started doing the H1 Ceramic on Ceramic as part of a MHRA study. Can you say why you prefer those devices? So the BHR, of course, is the standard um, device for male hip resurfacing. Um, the Evolution is a naturally an evolution from the furlong. It's a fully hydroxyapatite coated titanium stem, which seems to be a very safe and effective femoral component, together with a CSF cup, which is an ODEP 10A rated, 10A star rated um, acetabular component. I like to use ceramic on ceramic bearings for two reasons. One, with the Delta um, ceramic, you can get a, as big a ball as possible. Um, and so the um, dislocation rate is extremely low. And of course, they're very durable bearings. So this seems to be a very safe um, combination. Which surgical approach do you use? I use the posterior surgical approach as a standard. Do you think metal allergies and pseudotumors are problems with hip resurfacing? Uh, yes, they are problems, but they're small problems, and they seem to be pretty predictable problems. So in well-fixed devices um, that are well-orientated, um, they seem to be very, very rare indeed. Um, now, I very seldom see such a problem. Most of the problems that I have seen have honestly been related to surgeon error with either me personally or other surgeons failing to appreciate just how important the acetabular orientation is, particularly in smaller females. Do you think women and small men are good candidates for hip resurfacing? Uh, not today for Birmingham hip resurfacings. They're not. And the reason they're not is that the fairway, the, the margin of safety, is pretty small um, with a BHR. And that's the reason that we started the H1 uh, ceramic study, in fact. Do you think that the negative press that hip resurfacing has received is true? No, I think it's been completely unfair. I think hip resurfacing is definitely the safest um, option for patients today. Actually... Um, there's huge data sets now showing how in important, in the important measures of patient safety, so the avoidance of major complications following surgery, rare but very important complications like death or stroke, um, hip resurfacing is definitely safer than hip replacement. Um, in, in infection, in hip replacement is definitely superior to hip, hip replacement. And from all of our lab work in in terms of functional gain, hip resurfacing is superior to hip replacement. So I, I feel absolutely um, convinced that the press has been just thoroughly unfair for commercial reasons, honestly. What do you think the future of hip resurfacing is? I'm uh, committed, to, absolutely committed to hip resurfacing. Um, I have no doubt what I, it's certainly what I'd have right now. Um, I'm obviously very biased at the moment because of our ceramic study, which we might talk about. Um, at the end, but I have no doubt that it's got a major place to play.